it's Tuesday, so we are talking money matters. Today, pensions are a rarity and Social Security isn't a slam dunk for future generations. So how should you plan for your golden years? And if you have access to a retirement plan at work, such as a 401k, should you be taking advantage of it? Financial advisor Ernest Burley from Burley Insurance and Financial Services is back with us again to talk your retirement plan simplified. Well, Mr. Burley, can you tell me about some of those typical employer-sponsored retirement plans? Well, some of them include the 401k, like you mentioned before, but there's also the 403b, TSP, uh, 457 plan. And there are two plans that are very friendly to small business owners, and unfortunately, they don't take advantage of it, the SEP IRA and the Simple IRA. So I encourage small business owners to try to take advantage of those. I see. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people my age, they're just finishing school, starting those full-time jobs. When should they start thinking about their retirement plans? How much money is going into it, getting into that at their jobs? Uh, as soon as they start working. <laughs> because we talked about our friend compound interest, the, the longer you put into the plan, the more opportunity you have to build compound interest over time. So the sooner you start, really the less money you have to start with as opposed to starting much later in life where you have to really start chunking away money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those advantages of you know, opting into the employer-sponsored retirement plan versus another type of plan. Yeah, so the advantages, I mean, the first advantage is you're saving for your retirement, right? So if you don't put anything into the bucket, there's not going to be a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It doesn't work that way. So that's one advantage. The second is you're getting a tax benefit by doing it. So if you put away 5000 you earn $50,000, you are only taxed on 45000 So that's another advantage. Uh, and then also the money is growing tax deferred going forward. So you're not taxed on the gains every year. And also a lot of these plans have matching programs. So you always want to take advantage of the match too. Matching. What do you mean by that? That's just with the employer sponsored programs? It's matching like your blue and red. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no. So no, um, what they matching programs say, if you put in a certain amount of money, then they will match it. So hypothetically, if you put away $2,000, they'll add 2000 So by the end of that year, you will have $4,000 contribute instead of your 2000 You always want to take the free money. Right. So what determines that match? Is that just based off the plan that your employer provides you with? It's based on uh, the percent, a percentage of your income and the amount that you contribute. So hypothetically, if you earn 80000 a year and there's a 5% match, that means 5% of 80000 is 4000 If you put away 4000 they're going to put away 4000 So you have 8000 contributed by the end of that year. But if you put away less, they're going to match less. If you only put away 1000 they're going to put away 1000 If you put away more, 10000 they're still going to cap it at the 4000 mm -hmm. That's the way it works. I see. So what if my employer's plan doesn't provide me with any kind of matching? Should I still be contributing to that plan? Is it still going to be worth it for me? Yeah, so it depends. Uh, this is where strategy comes in, right? So I, I highly recommend clients open up a Roth IRA if the plan isn't matching. But you have to realize the Roth IRA is not going to um, give you a tax break on the front end. It's on the back end. So some people love that tax break on the front end. So if they do, then do that. But the Roth IRA is a great way to go, um, but they have a limit. If you're under 50, 7,000 is the max you can put away. So if you want to put away more, max the Roth and then put the balance into the 401k plan. I see. So I'm, I'm still kind of learning about all this stuff. How do I decide where to put my money in the plan? Yeah, take a look at your risk tolerance. We talked about this a few weeks ago and also your time horizon. So how much risk are you willing to take to try to make some possible gains and how long is it before you plan to retire? And those plans have a wide spectrum of um, funds. So everywhere from conservative to aggressive and everything in between. So you kind of diversify based on the funds you have access to. I do recommend you get assistance with that, though, if you don't really know how to do that. <laughs> I see. Okay. Uh -huh. So when it comes to the different plans, what are some of the advantages of the different growth options that they could give you? You know, how much is it going to grow over time? And what should I be looking for when it comes to that? Right. So on the growth side, those funds range from like large cap, small cap, mid cap, international funds, blue chip funds. And, you know, oddly enough, the small cap and mid cap funds outpace large cap funds. The large caps are like your um, top 100 companies in the country for the most part. But the smaller companies, sometimes they, they kind of outpace the growth there, but they're more volatile, too. And then there are international funds, too, that invest in uh, stocks outside of the United States to give you more diversification. So you kind of just diversify between those funds. And if you want some, some safety there, you, you get some of those conservative funds, too. I see. So if I don't want to do the small cap or the large cap, what if I want to be in the middle and kind of make sure there's like a good balance between my retirement plan and if I have any kind of other investments, something mm -hmm. like that? 
Right, right. So you just balance it between those two. You do, I mean, you might include some small cap, large cap, international, what have you, but if you want it in the middle, you'd have half of it in the conservative funds, which are things like bond funds, income funds, they have stable money market funds. Those type funds are more conservative. So you do like half of your money would go there and the other half would go in the more aggressive or I would say growth oriented funds like your small cap, large cap, mid cap, international funds, blue chip funds. You just choose which ones you wanted to put in there. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank That's you. That's for assistance. I will. I'll <laughs> always do that. Thank you very much, Mr. Burley. I'm You're definitely welcome. getting a lot smarter talking to you. Sounds good. Uh, individuals should be contacting their own financial professionals and attorneys to help answer questions about specific situations or needs before taking any action based on this information.